In our last video, we did a tour of our new dig garden in autumn. And as I said then, there is plenty to harvest. And today is a harvest day. Hello and welcome back to the Nudig Norfolk Gardener. Hello Scylla. <laughs> Mrs W has been picking her gourds. Now although these are not edible, it's actually really quite an important crop for us. Because Abby gets married. Well this time next year, doesn't she? she and does. she wants an autumnal feel to the decorations at her wedding. So things like gourds, pumpkins, squash, the spent sunflower heads, they'll all point to that autumn time of year. And of course, that's without the flowers that Mrs W shall be growing. So 2025 shall be a busy year. Now the first thing I want to begin with is the squash that we've got. And they are indeed ready for their harvest. Hello Luna. Now when you come to harvest your squash, it's a good idea just to leave a little tea on it. This larger one, it blew off in the wind. That's why it only has the single stem. But you can see why it's called the onion squash, can't you? You can. Very onion shaped, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Don't taste of onion. <laughs> And these curry squash, they're good at climbing, also very good at growing along the ground. The butternut squash are also ready for their harvest. It's lovely, Mrs W. Yeah, that's a nice specimen, isn't it? Considering we haven't had any butternuts for the last couple of years, have we? It's uh, nice to get them back. Yeah. Be successful again with them. And this is a variety called Hunter. It's supposed to have been especially bred for the British climate. Well, it worked this year. <laughs> Even we though the British climate wasn't quite as normal as a British climate. <laughs> what I would say is that it's traditional to put straw or an old tile underneath your squash so that they don't get damaged. But actually on our new dig plot, there's been no damage at all. They've been absolutely fine. So that saves a job that you'd normally need to do. It also keeps the slugs awake because as soon as you put straw down anywhere... They gather there, heaven. don't they? Yeah. <laughs> as you say, slug heaven. <laughs> I'm really quite pleased with those. Yeah, they look lovely. Now this one you see here is not quite ripe. But if you take it down into your house, they will ripe on the windowsill, on a nice sunny windowsill. You can see the difference, can't you? You can see the difference, can't you? It's slightly greener and still got the sort of stripes on them, whereas the others, they, as they mature, they lose the stripes, don't they? So 
still getting regular side shoots of the Calabrese broccoli, which is lovely. A little bonus harvest. And after you've taken the central head, they continue to do that for a number of weeks. Let those grow on a little bit there, Mrs W. Mm -hmm. That'll be a harvest for us for next week. Yeah, there's plenty there for us. Next I want a couple of carrots. If you remember, I said in the last video that these were a variety called Chantenay Red. You can see they're really stump-rooted and they get quite large. But an absolutely gorgeous carrot and a wonderful taste. That's more similar to the shape, isn't it, Mrs. Yes, w? yeah. And if you have got really clay soil, this is a great variety to actually grow. Because you can see they don't go down too far, but they get nice and fat. Gives you plenty of carrot. Gonna have some beetroot next. And ever since Mrs. W introduced these into a stir fry for me, honestly, absolutely amazing. I hadn't realised before that you could stir fry these vegetables, but because traditionally they're not. They're either roasted or you pickle them. So it's just another way to enjoy their glorious flavour. Now the next thing that I want is a pepper. It's looking gorgeous, Mrs. W. Yes. That's a whopper, that one is, isn't it? Lovely pepper. Yeah. And we have several that are starting to come ready now. That one is completely red. But we do have some that are almost there. I think we have some in the polytunnel that are ready as well, don't we? We do, yes. Need to probably harvest those now too. These chilies are ready for their harvest. Yeah, I think it's probably best that we take all of the red ones off now to give the green ones optimum time to ripen in what little time we have left in here. <laughs> yeah. It is still quite warm in here during the day though, so. I'm hopeful we'll still get some more ripening. As you can see, we've had a lovely harvest of Cheyenne peppers that we grew. A lovely yellow they, colour, aren't they? They are chilli peppers, they are. Yeah. Yeah. And as you can see, we still have many tomatoes <laughs> that we're enjoying. And why not? While we can. Another pepper ready here, Mrs. Oh, nice. W. Look at that. I think I may have to be getting on to my chilli jam. Yeah. And I think these are starting to they go. They are look. starting. They are supposed to be yellow, aren't they? The yeah. bullhorn yellow pepper. So, yeah. We'll, we'll leave them another couple of weeks. <laughs> Please. Even though I'm <laughs> desperate to get my vegetables in here. <laughs> but those are the breaks some years. And, you know... Sometimes you're in here earlier, sometimes that little bit later. We still have quite a few aubergines trying to fall, that are growing. Have we? Yes, and I think there's possibly one there that needs harvesting. I harvested some about a week ago, and I left that one on because it was a bit small, but it definitely isn't a bit small now, so... How about that? Second week in October, and we're still getting... Aubergines. Yeah. And still a lot to come. Yeah. I am a bit reluctant to take these plants out, I have to say. Yes, I think we should try to leave them for a bit longer if we can. But as you can see, I have many plants that are waiting to go into this polytunnel and into the greenhouse. So I'm hoping it's not going to be too much longer, Mrs. W. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Now, I said earlier in the year that we wouldn't be growing main crop potatoes. Sorry folks, I 
didn't tell you the complete truth. We weren't going to do any more to grow main crop potatoes in the open ground. Not because I dislike growing them, absolutely love it, but they take up so much valuable space. And these days, you know, when you see the price of purple sprouting broccoli, a Calabrese broccoli, cabbages, cauliflower sprouts, they're all really quite expensive now in the shops. So it was better for myself and Mrs W to be able to turn our plots into those crops that would cost us the most money to buy. But what I did do, I planted some potato seed into these tubs. Uh, I think it was toward the end of April, wasn't it? I can't remember now, it was such a long time ago, but yes, it must have been yeah, around then. <laughs> so I'm quite interested to see What's in here? Oh, definitely potatoes. Ooh. That's, that's not bad, Mrs. W. No, no that's a nice size, isn't it? Mm. And this is a variety called Sarpomeru. I've never grown it before. But by the looks of this, Mrs W, I think I will be once again. They're looking nice, aren't they? They're not whoppers. No. But... But they're not, not small either, are they? So. No. Not by any means. And I just planted two seed potatoes in each tub. And for the first time of growing them, I'm actually really, really quite pleased. One of the things with potatoes is, especially main crop, is that they are the most susceptible to potato blight, and especially late blight. When we grow our potatoes in the ground, I used to grow Maris Piper. And they would harvest for us by the end of July, stroke beginning of August. And we got away without having really any kind of blight problems. But these Sarpumiru, they're reputed to be resistant to blight. And given all the wet weather that we've had, they weren't wrong. So, Mrs W, I think that's a real success. So do I. And we have... 12 tubs of these. Ooh. That'll keep us going for a bit. <laughs> Won't it just? Yeah, lovely. That'll be interesting to try them, see what their flavour is like. Yeah, and you're supposed to be able to do most anything with them. You know, you can boil them, chip them, mash them. Yeah. They're not going to be big enough, unfortunately, for... Jacket potatoes. Jack yeah, jacket potatoes. But... They're certainly big enough for you and I. Three certainly potatoes are. will give us enough there for a nice plate of wedges or roast potatoes. <laughs> Definitely. What an amazing harvest. What a great time of year autumn is. You see, it's not the end. We're transitioning from summer through autumn through winter. We still have much out there that will give us harvest when we do get to winter and through into the following year. But we can enjoy all of this now. It's the Calabrese broccoli, the aubergines, the chilies, the peppers, the carrots, beetroot, tomatoes, potatoes, and of course those lovely winter squash. All of this has grown from our new dig Norfolk garden. And if you want to see how we go about doing this, then make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you'll always be notified when we put a video out there, whether it be the sew-alongs, whether it be planting out. Whatever happens in this garden, you'll know first on our YouTube channel. And of course, there is also 
the How To series. And thank you all so very much for your amazing comments. It's been really great just to hear you all say that, yeah, it's, it's a really great idea and you love the format. We've worked really hard over the last year, taking as many pictures as we can so that we can add them to the screen while I'm talking so that you can see exactly what you need to do and when you need to do it. So do tap into that resource. Yes, we shall still be planting things out in 2025 and you can follow us along doing that. But if you need a reference to see exactly how they are grown, the complete cycle of growing that particular vegetable is on those how-to videos. And of course, the videos are called How To From Seed To Table. So that means that the lovely Mrs W has a recipe on there that will help you celebrate the wonderful veg that we can all grow. They tend to be quite simple recipes, nothing too elaborate. But just because it's simple doesn't mean to say that it's not tasty. Let's face it, when you've got vegetables like this, how can they fail not to taste amazing? Do let us know in the comments what you're harvesting at this moment. Hopefully you have plenty too. And myself and Mrs W, we shall see you back here in our new dig Norfolk garden very soon.